Hello, uh, it's me again. Uh, we haven't had a one-on-one -on -one for a little while and I really enjoy doing these so I thought I'd do one again and that's what this is. Today is not the day that I am posting this on. Uh, I'm actually filming this on the 29th of December 2017, all the way last year because uh, I predict I'm not actually going to get a chance to edit this for quite a while. And the reason I think that is because I'm currently house-sitting at Boy House. Why is there a dinosaur? And what a house it is. Uh, for my good friend James, Mr. What James Kehoe, I've been watching The Pets. I think I get more gigs watching Pets than I do playing music. Yeah, Maybe yeah. that's a new career venture, who knows. Uh, but I've had a lot of things happen. Thing the first, uh, I had a big gig opening for Tyler Hilton and Kate Vogel. It was just insane. Uh, I had two nights. The second gig was incredible. It was completely packed, standing room only. Like, I had to elbow my way through. They were just so nice from the very beginning. Just having people like getting into it and like riotous applause. Uh, and in the middle of Any Way You Want It, which is my favorite cover to do, um, uh, I was playing and I, and I looked to the side and I saw that uh, someone was having a medical issue, either a seizure or fainting and being laid down on the stage. So I saw this and I was like, one of two things is supposed to happen in this situation. Either the show must go on at all costs or somebody requires medical attention and I am the person to make relevant people aware of that. And uh, I did a little bit of soul searching on stage and I figured probably the second one was the way to go. But I didn't really do it gracefully. I was kind of just like, anyway, oh, uh, Eddie, can you get Paul? We, we have a lady who needs some help. And yeah, you know, some, she got taken away to get some air. Um, she's fine, she's fine. Uh, I, I checked in uh, and the paramedics came and made sure she was okay. But I was kind of just left, it was like, a, a anxiety nightmare. I was left on stage with like 400 people looking at me and I was just like, I don't, I don't know what the etiquette is in this situation. Do I continue? Do I keep playing? Is that rude? And everyone was just so supportive. They're like, yeah, 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 finish the song, do it, do it. And we did. And then we finished any way you want it and everyone had a good time. I had a wee bit of a happy cry because I was there by the merch table and there was this big long line of people and like, they, they couldn't have known how much it meant to me. But they were just like, CD, CD. Yeah, and I'll get this guy CDs too. And like a lot of people, a lot of people did that. And I was just like, <laughs> And then I think people saw me freaking out and they were like, You know what's gonna make this guy's day? Do you wanna sign these CDs? And the first time it happened I was just like, Why? Why? And I had to steal Tyler Hilton's fucking signing pen to sign my albums that I sold at this enormous gig. Ah! And yeah, like I got to talk one-on-one -on -one with a bunch of like real people and I know their names and they're... I don't know why I said it like that. I think I just... I don't know. I don't know. I just... I, I liked that I made a real connection with people. Oh, that makes me sound like such a fucking loser. It was a very good gig. It was a very good gig. A lucrative business opportunity. And, uh, I feel as though I've um, made some steps towards my goals. So the gig, the album launch went really well. Um, I think it went really well. And I'm gonna get a little bit real for you right now. Because when I'm not doing this for you, uh, I do this for myself. I keep a, a bit of a video diary. I have done for like five or six years. I did one before the gig and basically I was saying how I was a little bit sad. Uh, I was concerned that the album was going to be met with lukewarm reception and that a few people would come to the gig and then I'd go home by myself and just pick apart all the things that went wrong. And I think with a project like this, it can be really hard because, you know, I put, I put two years into it and people can only give me a night in response and they can only give me passing comments afterwards. and. It's never, no one is ever going to be able to give you back what you put into it. And you can't do it because you want that back. And you just need to accept that that's just how it is. But yeah, that was, that was a thing I was feeling. I felt like the gig wasn't going to go well. Because who knew that uh, I get anxious about things? Uh, I felt like the gig wasn't going to go well. And it was very important to me for a lot of personal reasons that this gig went well. And I'm not going to go into it. But it was just, it was a big win that I really needed. Um, 
after I already had a big win the previous week, like there's no logic to it. It's just personally, I was like, I really need this to go well. I need it for me, please. And it did. And it went so well. And like, just people just that I haven't spoken to in a long time that had no reason to just came and supported me and it was great and there was a huge crowd and I was playing and like when I when I was singing and I thought I heard people singing back and like sometimes when you're playing you can hear your voice bang, bouncing off the back of the room and I was like no that must be me during the chorus I heard it and I was like yeah yeah but then during the verses and I was like no surely they're not singing along to like every word of every verse of every song and then I found out later, like, yeah, yeah, they were. We like your music. We really like your music. And you don't seem to be able to understand that. And I still refuse to believe it. That's the thing. Fucking uh, depression and anxiety, it's all logic based. It's not real logic, but it's logic. You know, you're like, well, of course, this because of these things, you know, and the night went so well that I couldn't, I couldn't be depressed about it. I, there was no room for depression logic. I couldn't be, but no, just the gig was so much fun and just reminded me so much why I do this. You must have something that when you do it, it just turns off your brain and all the voices just go away and it's just what you're doing like video games or having a drink with your mates. Like, my brain is so loud all the time and like, and I forget, I forget. But when I get on stage, it's instantly like, this is why I do it. This is why I do it. Cause my brain just shuts off and it's just like, it's so, I just, I can't, I can't explain it. It's, it's good. And yeah, like, I had a wonderful, supportive crowd. You were probably there if you're watching this and thank you very much. The people who watch this are the kind of people that I'm talking about, so thank you very much. And just, yeah, just afterwards, after the gig, I was expecting to go home and just pick it apart. And there was a, a, a wonderful group of people who were there and they had uh, bought me a birthday cake uh, as like a celebration. And like, I know it was just uh, a special occasion uh, I know it was just a special occasion, and it's not gonna happen at every gig, but I just, I really needed this. Um, you know, and it just didn't go how I thought it was gonna go, and I'm really glad that it, uh, went as well as it did. You know, and we sat in the valley at, like, three in the morning eating cake in the street, and then we danced all night, uh, to, like, yeah, very early in the morning. And it's not an experience I've had after many if not any of my gigs and I just really appreciated it and uh, I just really felt like it was paying off you know and I know it's not uh, it's not every time you know you can't just buy me cakes after every gig I'll get too fat and you'll be too broke but um no I just I couldn't be sad you know, like, uh, the facts were there and I couldn't arrange them in a way that I could say, well, like, of course no one cares about my music, blah, 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 of course no one cares about me, you know, like, I couldn't. And I just really appreciate that a lot to everyone who was involved and to you. And, like, even if you, even if you bailed after the gig and you're like, oh, shit, I didn't get him any cake, like, you did more than you could ever know and I appreciate it and I appreciate you so much. No, it was a good gig. And I have another gig in January! It was all a big advert! Aiden Bradley, he's launching his EP, little switcheroo! Uh, he opened for me, I'm opening for him. It's gonna be great. January the 27th. And the last thing that I'll talk about, I've been kind of putting it off because I feel like it's probably gonna upset a couple people, uh, is I will be taking another short hiatus. Uh, just because, you know, Guilty, it took a lot out of me and I just need a little bit of time to recharge, if that's okay. Right, well I'm fully recharged and I'm really looking forward to doing new stuff for you. So, uh, Guilty is available now on Spotify, Bandcamp, and iTunes. Guilty by your man Alex Smith. Have a happy new year. Be your best self. I know you're gonna smash it. Let's do great things together. Let's do it. Alright, um...
Bye! <laughs> Bye! I gotta work on the endings. Bye!